Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to um, take apart iPad mini of Retina display. So this is the new iPad mini 2. As I power on. Um, this is a 4, this is a 16 gigabytes model. It's a Scarlet in package from Apple. Actually I bought this on Amazon. So I don't want to wait in line. Uh, I got it in two day shipping which is reasonable. Um, so yeah, you set out your iPad mini and yada yada, everything works, sound works, button works, everything's fine. But I'm not interested in setting up my mini now. Because now that our screen is nice and clean, we'll go ahead and mix up some 5 minute epoxy. We just use it in the corners to aid with the adhesive and helping to hold down the screen. This won't... Because I'm more interested in t taking it apart for today rather than using it for, as an iPad mini. Um, so this is going to be a tutorial showing you how to take a tear down your mini and repair it. So to do this, I just bought this tool as well. Um, and it's an opening screen tool, it's generic. Uh, you can buy this one in China. Uh, so let's see how it works. So before I start, I want to preheat my mini. I can use the infrared heater, which is kind of overkill. Um, most of you probably don't have that as for preheat. So what I'm gonna use here today is just a heat gun. And from looking out online, doing my research, I know there is um, connectors at this location for the digitizer attachment. So I want to stay away from this area. I'm thinking about starting at this corner. Or starting in the middle is always a good spot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the credit card in or slide one of these... Um, where did it go? Um, hold on. You can slide one of these uh, stainless steel plate. Or a plastic piece of credit card so you don't damage the inside screen. So let's do this. Um, the adhesive is around this corner and this corner. So all, you, all I'm doing right now is I'm just heating up the glass. If you put your hand next to the heat gun, um, it starts to hurt, you start feeling pain, that's about 50 degrees Celsius. And that gives you a I'm uh, gonna give you a sense of temperature. 50 degrees is enough to soften the screen. Um, it doesn't really matter what you say it's on the monitor as a heat gun. Like it can say 300 degrees Celsius, 1 degree. It doesn't all doesn't matter because that degree is inside the heat gun. It's not what the actual degree heating the screen. So using your hand could be a um, good enough estimate of the heat. You just need to heat the glass. Um, I want you to heat the glass evenly because if you only heat it on one side that's too hot and the other side is too cold you're gonna create stress on the glass and when you try to pry it open there's a higher chance of uh, breaking it. So I never used this tool before in theory it should work because you are prying opposite side of um, the glass but let's see how good does it work Oh, it actually works pretty well. Um, I can get in my credit card pretty easily. And thanks to the heating, the credit card can slide right through it without too much difficulty. I, this is pretty good too. I didn't even need to use this. Um, I actually don't like to use metal parts because of the obvious risk of damaging brand new iPad mini screen glass. You know, I think I'm gonna buy two of these because they will come in handy. Um, one is not enough, you need something to hold this in place. And there we go. It also helps to heat up the glass as we go. Yeah, this works really well, extremely well. Um, I'm impressed actually. I wish I came up with something like this. I did, it's just I didn't make it. 
the southern one to you. Alright. Slide the cotton in. Cut it in a little bit more. So we want to do that again. Alright. I'm excited. Oh by the way, this is my um first iPad mini or retina display, so uh, last year I did a video tutorial for iPad mini when it first came out, the iPad mini first generation. And that was my first iPad mini. When I take a pocket, I just got it, and this is the iPad Mini 2. So, if you're doing it for the first time for this repair, particular repair, don't worry. I am in just the same boat as you. Um, I'm also doing this for the first time. I'm trying not to damage the screen. Gently heat up. And slide the credit card. Sometimes I wish I had three hands. Two is just not enough. Maybe like an assistant or something to help me with this. Um, why I should the pry open. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna be quiet now and focus on this. So to do this and talk at the same time. So far it works very well. And at this point I don't think I need this plunger anymore. I can just pry it with my finger for the rust. Slide the card. Slowly. Separating the digitizing. There we go. Now the digitizer is being separated. Just tape. Getting rid of tape. Okay, so now the mini is open. This is the intact digitizer. I didn't do any damage. Didn't have any dust on it either. And as you can see, this is our um, screw chart. It's magnetic screw chart. And I can turn off the hot air gun now because there's no more blue part that I need to remove. Uh, this is the iPad mini for the first generation. I am unsure if the second generation has any different 
seeing a school location. But during the meantime, uh, they're roughly to be about the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the first generation iPad mini from cyberdarklc.com. The screw chart was magnetized and to remove all the screws I can see and place onto the chart. And I want to charge my screwdriver with a magnetized. That's why I won't lose the scoops. Um, very good. Seems to be a screw hiding here. Um, See on my screw chart there's supposed to be four screw holding the screw down and I'll imagine even with the iPad 2 uh, iPad mini retina display it will have the same location uh, they would, the Apple wouldn't get rid of the fourth screw on the other side so it must exist so, voila. See uh, pretty sneaky there's a screw under um, here there's some sponge yeah some kind of sponge layer that tape hiding the screw. It doesn't really protect much, but it's hiding it. Just want to remove it. And screw it. Mm. Mm. Let's try a different screwdriver. Okay. So a little bit difficult but the screw came out. You just have to put some pressure on it if it's not moving on its own. And just be careful, you know, like ah, uh, like that. Don't do that. You wanna remove this tape. See this tape over here? A little tape. And just put it somewhere else. Remove screw one by one. Like such. And put it on its proper location on the screw chart mat. And there's only four, as, um, only four on the LCD screen. Now I can separate the LCD screen. There must be some. I'm getting some resistance as I separate the LCD screen. Unless there's another screw, I think this must be a clipping magnetism as well, um, which seems to be the case. the LCD. I don't see any other screws. Oh, I'm holding, that's because I was holding the metal shell in the back. So when you open this, be careful because um, you might overreach with your hand. And uh, instead of taking just the LCD upward this way, you're also taking, likely taking the, um, the metal shield, shielding in the back. And so you might damage the iPad. I was being very gentle and careful, that's why it's no problem there. Um, Alright, so there's some tapes on here, you want to remove it. Um, just, they don't do anything, they really just there to deter you from doing this repair. And just remove it gently. We could cut it. It's really just tape, does nothing. Alright, there we go. More tape. Alright, so... Be careful when you remove this tape, you never know what's underneath. Um, that's why I'm doing this, I guess, so you can see what's underneath. And when you do this, it'll be less of a scare when you're ripping things up. So, since you see where it is. Okay, so um, I'm removing this screen now. I'm gonna lay it on top of the digitizer. Uh, there's two cable here connecting the screen and the digitizer separately. Before I do that, I need to remove this annoying heatsink. Um, so, when you compare with iPad Mini 1, there's much more screws on the side for the heatsink. 
an iPad Mini 2 with the Retina display, there seems to be less screws on the heatsink. I still don't quite understand why there were so many screws in the first place, or what's the purpose of the heatsink. It seems to be doing nothing but um, making this repair extra difficult, well, just a little bit more difficult and time consuming than it need to be. Um, doesn't seem to serve too much of the purpose. Um, normally you put the ESM heatsink on devices to block electrostatic charge from the larger board, but since the larger board already have an ESM uh, shield, I don't really quite sure. Um, what's the purpose there? So if you know, um, or you have some brilliant idea why this thing will be necessary posted, aside from making the screen straight, I can't think of any reason. It's just a waste of material and increasing the weight of the mini actually. Maybe it's there to balance the weight. I don't know. Can only guess. I wouldn't design it with it, but oh well. Um yeah. Just wanna wiggle a little bit. This thing doesn't come out easy on like perpendicularly. So you gotta wiggle a little bit because some of the holes are holding it down with the case. Like as you see these are not smooth self like edges, it has like bumps on the side of the screws so it's more difficult to pull out right away up, like straight up top. Okay so this is it, this is the inside of the iPad mini 2 with retina display and let me just remove this heatsink or ESM shield so I can expose the battery connector and more importantly, this way I can remove the annoying appendage of LCD, LED monitor, and the digitizer. So there's three screws here, just so you know. Alright, one, two, three. I'll take a more detailed picture as I remove these parts and take a picture for the new screw chart. Alright, so careful here, there's a lot of little mini filters and resistors and god knows what, some capacitor here I can see right next to this LC LED uh, screen display so I'm gonna put my finger in and lift upward okay so it's a 90 degree perpendicular mechanism you just flip it outward like all the other um, Apple magnet, Apple switch I think I recognize this connector. Um, it's from one of the manufacturer I usually purchase. So I recognize the manufacturer of this connector. That's good. Um, Apple has been using the same partner, I guess, connector for a while now. And this is the digitizer. I'm trying to figure it out if you can take it out separately. I think you can. So there's another flat connector here, flat ribbon connector. I flip it. And now it's being separated from the board without any issue. Very good. And hold on. Eh, that's okay. Um, a little technical difficulty. Okay, let's carry on. And this is the touch digitizer board. Um, let's separate that as well. It's I'm pretty sure it's just glued down. So, but just in case, I'm gonna use the plastic piece, like a credit card, and just gonna slide in. There may be a screw down here, just because there's a tape here. I'm gonna remove it, just in case. Checking out if there's a screw somewhere. Apple loved hiding screws. Okay, so it's there's no screw under this um, digitizer home button board. There we go. Just gonna pry it up. Okay, 
So you do it this way. Now I can remove the LCD screen and the digitizer in one piece. Two separate pieces, but okay. Now I'm gonna take an overview picture of this board for the purpose of the next generation of iPad mini um, retina display. It's for the screw shot, so I need a picture for it. And this will be our conclude our part one of the disassembly. To reassemble the screen, you're simply just connecting the LCD connector up here, this location, and the digitizer connector, this location. Just click, click, and put it back. With or without this, I honestly don't think it's necessary to put this back. And it really does absolutely nothing, in my opinion. So um, it's up to you um, when you reassemble. So this will be our part one, and I'm gonna take a picture. I'm gonna come back to do our part one of the this is part two of the disassembly. I'm gonna try to take out the larger board or as much as the ribbon cable as I can, and that will be separate videos. Um, I wanna try to get a complete tear down of this iPad Mini today if I can. Okay, thank you for watching. I will see you in part 2. Thank you. Yep, again, a lot of respect for these people, these new workers working at Apple Factory at Foxcom. Putting this together for less than a dollar an hour. Amazing, just amazing. Very thankful for my products. I don't know, what do you guys think? I would like these workers get paid more, they have like a better wage But then your iPad mini or well, all this product will cost more as a result, so I don't know I do think they should get paid more though for the work they do Or maybe just have a better living standard um, have you seen uh, this Foxconn factory? A little bit off topic, but um... Oh, you're not seeing the picture. There we go. Those Foxconn, Foxconn factory, they have such a cramped um, dormitory rooms for the workers. I mean, they have very nice recreational areas and computer rooms and all that yada 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 stuff. But um, the living room area, like bedrooms are really small. I think the reason I do that at the factory is because that way the worker will spend more time to work instead of sleep. But sharing one bedroom with nine or six people is just too much, uh, in my opinion. I didn't even go through that treatment when I was triple in college. And that's not even work, that was just, you know, fun in my college education. Alright, so this thing can come out easy. If I just do this. Yeah. Without like messing around with the tape too much. Okay, so this is the Wi-Fi connector. It holds the Wi-Fi antenna. Let me take these screws out so the antenna can come out. Good, and you can see. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Seven screws in total, three on one side, four on the other. Again, this thing comes in handy. And let me zoom in. I need a camera, man. Sometimes I wonder if those Google Glass actually works. Maybe I should get one. So this will be... Oh yeah, Google Glass will help. Like, if you can see what I see, much easier. Instead of using this camera. This is fun. You know, you should just go up to your local Apple store, pick out an iProduct, and, you know, take a part. Saturday weekend project. Oh, today is Saturday, by the way. Saturday weekend project. Some people have a uh, model ship or puzzles for fun. 
because this is what I do instead of puzzles on Mothership. Okay, there we go. There we go. A lot of scoops. Okay, Wi-Fi connector number one. Off. Wi-Fi connector number two. Clear it off. Coming off, coming off. Any screws there? No, no screws. Subway. You can peel it out easily. There's two latches. One, two. And at this point, it's kind of important um, to look closely. You want these things to come up, up directly. So just do it very gently, as close as to the base as possible you possibly can, and lift upward. Similar to the um, don't don't rip the cable. Try to get get the metal part loose. Otherwise, you can really damage the board and you can break the cable, obviously. But you can really damage these little two pieces. By the way, we sell these uh, at cyberdocklc.com. You can buy these uh, 3G Wi-Fi um, holder connector. They all the same for all the Apple models. Um, it's a little little buggers. Very easy to rip off on the board. Um, so yeah, these these things how it, how they work is uh, they have one. You can pretty much see this is the connection. They have one connection to picking out radio frequency or Wi-Fi frequency in this case. This go pin it transmit signal to here, and rest of it, these parts are just holding it down. It doesn't really do anything. They're grounding it units. This is the important part. The go pin and this this track. And yeah. There's a lot of little bit of coils. Uh, I'm gonna come out with the specification for these and we will be selling it. Mm, okay, just in case you break it because it, you're not careful you have fat fingers or something. I don't know. Okay, so we done everything. Let's zoom out. Nothing is on top. Ignore this microphone ribbon cable. It's not there. Don't look at it. Um, Logic is still in there. Tape down. Um, battery we're not touching because it's so pretty as it is. No reason to disturb it. And the speaker is still there. Speaker, it's uh, for iPad Mini 2 with Retina display. Oh, I'm tired of saying this whole thing. Let's look at iPad Mini 2 with Retina display. Oh, I'm saying it again. Uh, the speaker is a stereo speaker. Its connection is here with those two screws. So I'm gonna remove these. In iPad Mini 1, I remember there was two screws down here, like, it was really difficult, it was like a, vert, like a perpen yeah, perpendicular screws down there with the case. I don't think it's here for iPad 2. Oh, by the way, this, I'm sorry, I'm just going tangent all the place. Um, put that on hold. This was the Wi-Fi antenna. Um, I'm sure you can find these on China website or eBay or something, or Amazon. I like Amazon, but yeah, you can find these on eBay or Amazon, I'm sure. Um, so left and right, this is the right side, and this is the left side. And if you want to go with, you know, patient left, right side, this will be the right side of the Mini. Left side of the Mini. Confusing, huh? Mini is a patient. Crazy. Okay, moving on. Putting the cable on the other, you know, far away. Okay, now, four screws, that's what I would think. Zoom in. Okay. Let's take them out. One at a time. One screw down. Goes on a little mat. There's a little washer. I think you need this. It's there to... Um, let me see if there's anything else in there. Uh, it's there to block the washer from conducting electricity from the speaker. Without this washer, I imagine your speaker sound system wouldn't be so great. So let's save the washer. It's kind of important. Oh. Yeah, save the washer. Okay, so to remove the sticker, uh, speaker, I have no freaking idea. It's been taped. Um, oh, zoom out. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Zoom out. 
Oh god, I hate this heater. I wish I could turn it off, but I can. Piece of junk. It's just making me. I need to move this table. I don't want to work on this corner. I can see. Damn. It's like impossible. Damn. Alright. Pull it together. I hate this camera setup. Oh. I stand. Alright. I can't really see all that well. Okay, let's take the whole thing off first. Uh, two more screws. And we're pretty much down here. One screw here. One screw here. And then I'm pretty convinced I can take out the lining conductor after this. Yeah? Nope, something's still holding it in. Okay, so I guess it's our old friend. Little vertical screw, there's some tape here. I knew it. Sneaky sneaky. At least Apple didn't change that all that much with iPad 1, iPad, uh, iPad Mini 1, iPad Mini 2. Alright, so super size picture of this lining connector. What? Guess what? Little teeny tape here. Hiding screw number 1. And screw number 2. Can see, can see. I need to get my surgical loop loops. I'll help a little bit. Ah, still camera in my way. There we go. Ah, it's not even like regular tape that comes. Oh, comes off. Okay, so it comes off. Get the, f get this thing fuck out of. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Ignore my language. Ignore my French. Um, little piece of annoying tape right there blocking the screw. Screw number two. Screw number one. And get this tape off too. Yeah, it's off. All right, now let's get these screws out. I am not looking forward to repair iPad Mini. Again, mutual respect for the Chinese workers, factory workers. Oh lord, their life is difficult. Okay, separate all these screws based on the size and location. Onto the screw chart. Okay, there we go. Then moving second screw. That's in awkward vertical location. I'm gonna call it perpendicular screw of Apple. Okay, so I'll give you a quick look of um, how, where I put my screws and the exact location, how it's shown so this is the larger screw that's on top yeah. there. the larger screw with a little washer this is the vertical perpendicular screw and these are the little screws that's holding a lining connector um. alright so I just put that in the proximal location right there that's where you can put it back and have a look this is this was my iPad mini 1 scoop chart um, scoop chart yeah scoop chart is good I can't say scoop mad because it's trademarked so um, this is not a scoop mad this is a scoop chart magnetic mad which is exactly the same thing if not better because my pictures are bigger but can't use that name for some reason because it's trademarked alright with download screws, um, one last little teeny screw over here. Okay, so we done all that. Uh, let's get the lining cable off first before I pull the larger board. I know I say we'll leave the larger board alone, but I change my mind. I'm just gonna get it out. Pull that nail. So let's get the lining connected out. Right now, there's nothing stopping us from taking it out. 
get some credit card. Pry out this cable. So you get more movement. Careful with the battery connector. And don't overdo it. There we go. Lightning connector. Disassembled. Yeah. Oh, all that. There we go. Alright, last screw right there. Goodbye from the larger boy. And let's free the larger boy. Oh god, I have to put this bad dude, don't lie. You know, iFix is so lucky. They just take everything apart. I bet they don't even take it, put it back. It's great. Don't need to put this back. I don't want to. It's gotta take. It probably wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be all that bad. It would actually be enjoyable if I could do it, you know, take a nap first and do this later. And maybe, like, not, not have to do this with a camera in my face. Um, yeah, careful with this part. Um, it's a lot more screw, uh, glue here for some reason. And you see that little bridge? That little bridge of a board? It's easy to break, so you put too much pressure there, it can break. And that's why I don't use um, stainless steel for a lot of these prime. Plus, this is the best. Ah, there we go. Alright, so that concludes our. I don't know what I was doing. Um, disassembly, I guess. Our educational iPad mini disassembly. Since this iPad mini just came out, and this repair, this disassembly just being done, like I say, oh, okay, there's stuff in the back. I thought it was nothing in the back. Okay, practically nothing. There's a lot of capacitor in the back, but that's about it. Ignore these areas. There's nothing here. Nothing to see. There's a lot of testing area. Um, there's a piece of uh, polymer film on the board, so I'm guessing you have to remove it first before you can reach in these little gold dots. Apple used these to t test the board for quality control before ship it out. Um, okay, I see that if you change the dock connector, there's two ways to change the lining dock connector. One, you can use the quick alloy, cyber dock, uh, low melting alloy to change just this part, which is probably easier. You can just solder this back on, remove it with the uh, low melting alloy from CyberDock. Um, yeah, and then s s solder it back with a little tin fine solder tip with a uh, sterile microscope right there. I have one. Ta ta. Beast. Okay, so use the microscope to assemble, solder it back. Or, or you can do it from the back. Here, if you have the cable that for a Chinese vendor, I think, yeah, there we go. You can solder this. That's also doable, very doable, actually. Um, yeah, you can solder these off and put it back. You know, I think they when they solder this, they use spot welder. I don't think they actually solder this by hand. Oh, no, obviously not by hand, no. I don't think they solder it by soldering iron at all. Maybe it's by machine, I don't know. I don't know why I have a feeling they use spot welder for this. I'm not sure. Maybe they have a pressurized machine holding it down and heating it up. With a pre-flow solder on the other side. I don't know. Or they could just use a spot welder, like pinpoint each point. I think the first one is more likely, not the spot welder part. All right, so this is it. This is the larger board for iPad Mini 2 with the Retina display. And it's not much to it, it's very fragile. It's thin, it's very thin. And this is the friend. It's heavy. Don't know why it needs to be this heavy. It's not even bulletproof. It's just heavy. Oh, I left the speaker in there. Do I really need to take the speaker out? Why not? I don't feel like it. Oh well, let's do it. Let's do it, because I have nothing better to do on a Saturday night, right? Right. 
Okay, this table. <laughs> Speaker out. There we go. Yeah. Push, push. Yay, speaker, right, left, however you want to call it. The side of the speaker is taken. I don't know, you call it right, you call it left of the light pad, right of my side, my right hand, left of the light pad, I don't know. Pick a side. That's, okay, fine, iPad is not a lie, so I'm gonna call this right speaker, this is on my right side. It's not a patient. Try this out because of the glue they put all over the place. Probably easier to use the other side. And just pull it as you go. On the bright side, this is down the repair, nothing you can damage, so be advantageous and spontaneous. Err. Uh, get out. There we go. Alright. The left side of the speaker. Done. Take a note. Okay, have a good look of the speaker. Um, it's a little copper piece. And... I don't know which one is the ground. I think this is the probably like where the current goes, and the second one is the ground. Remember, you want the lining cable, this part, to go in between this. All right, don't don't put it below or above. Put it in between the speaker part. All right, very important. All right. So this is a disassembling video and I'm gonna pause for now and the next video is gonna be uh, the reassembly video, okay? So thank you for watching. This is all the little teeny piece parts. I'm gonna take some pictures and I'll resume with the reassembly. Thank you for watching. See you next time in the reassembly of Viper Mini. I'm gonna leave it as this and then I'm gonna do some magic and put it back together. Look at my other videos. Have a good day. See you guys later next time. Hello. So this is going to be the final video for the iPad Mini 2 with Retina display. Reassembling video. So we're going to put everything back together. So these are the little tiny parts from our part 1 or previous uh, disassembling videos. Another friend, battery, annoying microphone connector. I'm eating something by the way, so I talk a little bit funny. Um, I've made chocolate. This is a logic board, two speakers, two Wi Fi left and right. This is the phone camera, back camera, bunch of heat seal over the place. The screws are distributed based on the iPad Mini 1. Uh, School chart math from cyberdogilc.com, which is our website. Uh, this is a school mat. The iPad Mini 2 will come out soon, but iPad Mini 1 works just fine. All the schools in approximately uh, similar locations, except a few of them here and there is a uh, different locations um, which need to be remake. Okay, so let's get started. Let me mount this camera. First, so I have a better view for the video. There we go. Okay. All right, this is gonna be another challenge for me because um, I just took a part of this iPad Mini 2 Retina display, uh, first time. And I'm gonna put everything back together, it's original order. Oh, I forgot to include these into the picture. Uh, this is the screen and digitizer, and this is the heat seal. Okay, I guess there's not enough room to put everything in. Um, right. So let's get started. Shall we? First, I'm gonna put in 
the same way I disassembled it, I'm gonna go from button up. So I'm gonna put the lining connector in, speaker, speaker, and larger board. Actually, speaker goes in first. Alright, it's gonna take a while. Um, okay. Larger, well, oh, speaker first. Hmm. So not really that much to it, just put the speaker in, right and left, match the location for the screws holes, the speakers, and now move all the parts aside, actually just move these parts out of the way, don't need it for now, put the larger board back in, Remember I say the um this lining connector? Let me zoom in. This connector needs to be in between the speakers. So that's gonna be a little bit tricky. So that's how we found it. Um alright, just be gentle. As always, and get a tweezer. Um, I, we suggest getting these tweezers from us. Go buy it from cyberdogllc.com. It's a very fun tip. Tweezers and tweezers designed for situation like this. To move little teeny small parts. Alright, I can't really see with the camera. I'm gonna move a little bit. Um, There we go. Get this in. Okay, as you can see, I damaged the little washer here a little bit. It's okay. It's not a big, not too big a deal. Um, it's still got, not gonna affect the speaker function because the contact here behind this part is still good and it's still attached to the speaker. This part is really useless now. Like uh, this little dot. As long as the other part is still have contact with the lining connector, the speaker will still work just fine. Just make sure when you put the, everything down, this part needs to be connecting with the lining connector. Which it is. See that I broke this part? Oh, don't worry about it. It will work. Okay, so let's get the... See, these are the screw I really don't want to put in. The little washer. Uh, no, so I mean like these screws. These two vertical screws. Again, using the screw mat. Uh, screw chop mat from cyberdogllc.com for iPad mini. As you can see, all the screws are in, in its uh, locations. This way, making it, putting it back a lot easier. Alright. So, remove these screws, seeing a vertical spot. Difficult to access. Get them in first.
Very good. All right, so that's both two screws are in. Now putting the top screws in. These are for the lining connector. Now the lining connector is in place. Next is the Wi-Fi antennas. It's one left, one right. Okay, the antenna goes through here. The Wi-Fi can wait, actually. Um, next, you put the washers back. Which was on top. And put the screws back. Get this tape off the way because it's in no way. Rip it off. Put in the Wi Fi conductor bag. There's three screws on this side, the left side of my hand. One. Are they all different sizes, by the way? So again, that's just why I have a screw chart right there. Otherwise, this is just not very pleasant. It's hard to do any of this repair without like a screw chart. And really help when this chart is uh, magnetic. There we go. Four of them on this side. They are different in sizes. I think those three are the same size, except the. Oh, hold on. One moment. The chair I'm sitting on is not all that very comfortable. Ah. There we go. One screw. Two screw. Three. And fourth screw. Hmm. 
Nu var det just det de skulle. Not sure why this screw won't go in. Uh, I'm just gonna leave this screw out because it's not going in. Save it for later. This one will go in though. Pretty sure it's the right spot. Um. Oh, okay, it's because the speaker is not aligned. My bad. Nothing was wrong. Rice location, rice school. Speaker wasn't online. Get the speaker. There we go. Just need to make it along. Oh. That's good. Okay, so next, I'm gonna put the antenna cable back. It doesn't really matter which one goes up, which one goes like on the button. They both are Wi-Fi antennas. So it really makes very little difference on the signal quality. There we go. Let's see. This goes to top and this one goes to bottom. And this you need to be very careful, you definitely need a tweezer for it. It would be better if the tweezers are made of plastic. Um, the last chance of you breaking anything. Well, just be very gentle and careful. A very good eyesight helps. Use your hand to push it in. Don't use the tweezer. One, it will damage the tweezer. Two, if you slip, you will end up damaging the component on the board. Just trust me on this. is just there to guide you to the proton location. Don't use force on it. Okay. There we go, use your finger. As you get tactile sensation feedback, so it's really it's really good. Um, this way you don't damage anything. Try to get the Wi-Fi cable in control, get it out of the way. Um. Alright, there we go. 
It'll be too long for their own good. Okay, so we'll leave the battery off. Um, I'm gonna put in the cameras. Uh, I forgot I took out the home button. Uh, Alright, so this is the power button. Push it in. It's symmetrical on both sides, no correct orientation. Try not to damage the camera lens and wear gloves and such. Um, for this part, you definitely need a tweezer. I don't know how you can do this without a tweezer. And just be very inefficient. Um, even with a tweezer, it's not cake work. So I put in the lining connector so far, and um, now I'm focusing on the power button. And the okay, there we go. Power button went right in. My finger, apparently. Uh, tweezer helps. Okay, now I need to find the correct corresponding part. This is the hole button, so let's put it in. The other direction, see? Okay. We put it in this way, this orientation. Okay. Just need to be in there. And next we put the camera back in. Camera, it's this one's glue on, as you really do remember. Um, there's two holes on the camera. Oh, something dropped. Um, what just dropped? Anyway, carry on. Let me see if there's anything. Oh, all right. Okay, so it was the plastic that dropped. Ah. I'll leave that alone for now. Okay, let's put the home, the power button in. All right. Now camera. Hmm. Let's put camera right here. Let's put the ribbon cable or all this stuff back in. Again, the home button orientation is this way. This piece down. Put it in. This is always a challenge. Um, putting this stuff back. So this is the correct orientation for the on and off button. And the tricky part is to get the the whole, whole button in and the volume button in correctly. After that everything should be easy. Try to get everything in one piece. Alright, so before I do that, I'm gonna put some screws on for, for the on and off button. So we we'll have a place that's everything's holding place. Have an area to walk with. Make sure the button works. There we go. Okay, two screws and try to get this in line. The rest of it is just screws. This is the tricky part. Hold it in place and try to get the buttons out. There we go. One's out, two is out. Okay. Very good, this is aligned. Now I just need to screw everything in place. I can call it a day. Um, oh, let me get the buttons off. There we go. Fix my gloves. Always break.
This is a little bit difficult because I'm doing like many days job all in one time. Um, there we go. Alright, so this is gonna be tricky. I now just need to align the plastic pieces. I also need to align the buttons. So, there we go. My objective is to get everything aligned. All the, including all the buttons and then they need to walk so okay this one this one I gotta walk this one needs to push out a little more alright I'm gonna screw some screw in see if that helps It's really convenient to have the screw chart to have all the screws saved. I'm gonna look for them. Alright. One screw in. Peeling this back because I know the screws down there. Okay, so both button works, see? One, two, three, they all work. Whole button works perfectly. This is what you wanna hear. In some sense, um, iPad Mini 2, the ribbon cable is relatively easier than iPad 2. Uh, you can watch my other videos for iPad 2, ribbon cable, uh, power cable, volume cable, whole, whole button cable replacement, and I think the iPad 2 is more challenging than the iPad Mini. I'm just not used to doing iPad Mini, that's why it's taking a little bit longer. Okay, so this cable, just plug it in, it helps to have a little tweezer so late for the day I'm kinda tired um, I'm just gonna finish this repair put everything back together and this is the little heat sink that I saved I put everything back together normally I probably wouldn't even bother with this part because there's nothing it's just there to hold this connector. Doesn't do much. I probably should design a more elegant. Uh, I mean, I get it that they don't want people to play with the products. They don't want them to fix it or tear it down or reverse engineer. What do what I'm doing right now? Tearing it down and putting it back together. I kind of get that part, but they making the product more expensive to uh, manufacture for no good reason. Because for whoever is putting this together, this is hell. <laughs> I am just doing one iPad. Imagine doing like millions of these for a month or week. Millions. Uh, it's hell. Okay. So. Yeah. I feel sorry for those people. Um, putting the camera back in. No, oh, you guys can't see. There we go. There's two holes, top and bottom. You aligned it. And the camera over here. Just fine, just push it down. And then you can put this. There's no screw for the camera. You can put this fat flat ribbon cable on and just press it lightly. There we go. And now we're putting the next step is uh, putting the audio cable in. So this is the audio ribbon cable with the audio jack. In case you were replacing these, you slide it in, and you probably should screw these two screws on first. So let's do that first. Uh, I have two screws saved here for the audio. I only have one, my bad. It's one screw right here, not two. It's one screw saved for one location. Just screw it on. Like, as such. Don't screw it too tight because you may have to take it off. Never know. 
All right. Um, okay, so this is well for you relatively in place. Just click it on fat ribbon cable. Click and adjust a little bit. Good. Now putting the microphone in. You see this back switch? Zoom in. It's detail. Sort of important. Is that back switch here? Only use your finger for this. Don't use any tools. You can break this very easily. And I guess if you really need it, there's a backup connector right here. It's doing absolutely nothing. But then you will need to solder and all that stuff. It's just annoying. This is for the microphone. And do only do this when you can see. I can't really see, so I'm gonna use the mic. Oh, you know what? The camera actually helped me to see because this is being zoomed in. Alright, so once you plug it that in, you put the back switch down, you push it down, preferably in the center. And that's it, this is the microphone in place, phone camera. Whoa, this way. And... As such, I wonder if there was... No, I don't think there was... There was no screw for it. Phone camera is kind of dangling there because uh, we ripped it off on tapes, so we just have to tip it back. There's any adhesive left on it. Um, and then you can click this fat ribbon cable gently. Do it gently. There we go. You hear the click. Okay. Uh, it's up to you if you want to close these book-like protecting part. Uh, they have some adhesive on it. They don't really do anything. Um, it's like getting in the way, I guess. So it's probably a good idea to close them. Cause they, otherwise they're going to be in the way. Or because it's a ripple and all. Like, they, they are not essential. I'm just going to type one down. So it doesn't make like funny, funny thing on the screen because it's gonna be unequal like pressure. All right, camera, I just sit here. Um, you can type it down or however you like it, glue it down. Doesn't matter. It's just dangling there. It's fine. Okay, so everything is almost back. Um, there's a shield for the. Let's see where does this go? Um. I think it goes somewhere here, right? This is for the camera. Here. There we go. Okay, let's zoom now. I'm putting the screw back. Um, really. This one like a little bit uh Okay. Put one screw here. Alright, another unnecessary piece, I'll probably even put it in if I don't have to, um, it doesn't do anything. Let's make sure it's in the right spot. There we go. That's secure. Alright, now I can put this down. Tape. And, um... Put the scoop back onto the larger board. Well, so 
here. And now you can plug in back the battery. Since the iPhone iPad is not on, it's no danger to plug in a battery. In this stage of the reassembly, you hear that click, that means it's on. And you can put the screen back. Okay, so the last check again, uh, everything. I got all the screws back. Now, the only thing we need to screw back is the uh, rest of it and the metal shielding. Now, the fan of the shielding, but we have to do it, so let's do this. Um, at some point, we'll have to do it. Okay, so this is the screen. Put the connector back. Let's do the digitizer first. And I hear that click. Good. Now it's the LCD suite screen. Once you put those two on, they click click. And put this uh oh let me pull this up a little bit so it doesn't fall. You put this heat sink or shielding protecting thing um back on this way. Get the screws. One, two, three. Okay, so now all the screws in, logical is in place. Everything's good. And you want to put this heat seal back. Um, it's up to you if you want to put this thing back or not. Um, I'm going to, but if I'm doing this as a repair, only because I'm doing this for tutorial purpose, but if I'm doing this as a repair, I wouldn't. Because this thing is going to get in the way. So next time I want to open the iPad. Um, okay, so this, I think there's a trick to do this. You want to slide in this side first. This right side first. And let it go in. In the proximal location, you just flip it right down. And that's it. Now I just put all the screw back. Um, let me find... I'm just charge my screwdriver. So we have magnetism. Get the screw. So over here on top. Screw it in. What you want to do is you want to screw um, diagonally, you know, like so it's not on one side and then the other side. It's just something you pick up when you do a lot of. Screw Screw in. Um, let's screw diagonally. So everything's even and nice and even. Alright, so there's three screws on one side and four screws on the left side, three screws on the right side. So we just, there's only three spots, you can't really miss it. Try not to let this thing fall because this is still very delicate hang hanging there. Okay, so right side is finished, and then you can do the left side. Here we 
go. So this step alone is taking a lot of time. It's another screw that I dropped earlier. It's hiding there. It goes back here. They're all the same sizes. Four here, three here. Alright. Okay, so now it's done. Everything is in. I'll tighten it. Just checking the screws on. Okay, so now we're left with the only the four corner screw. After that, we're done. But before we do that, we need to clean the surface of this um, screen. So before we seal it, we need to clean it. Get a piece of microfiber. And let's get the cleaning started. Okay. I'm a little bit too lazy, but you really should use compressed air. It's kind of late right now, so I don't want to wake up everybody. Um, I don't want to Annoy the neighbors. <sighs> Alright, I'm gonna go use get a comp compressed air. You can get one of those uh, compressed air can, or you can get one of those uh, compressed air tank. <sighs> it's really your preference. I prefer the tank because you get more out of the box. So just wipe your screen with microfiber. Don't worry about the lint. You can always blow those out with a hot, high, high pressure air. Very good. And to get all the oil and grease that you introduce onto the screen off. That's what's important. Oh. Move the camera. Alright. Very good. Everything's off. Looks nice. Screen looks very clear. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, I think the digitizer is clean. Uh, it's a little bit dirty here too. Let me just wipe this. Sure. Everything is clear. There's one outside. Alright, there's one outside. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use compressed air and I'm gonna blast it this area.
Alright, so now I use compress here. I don't have a head attached to this because it's kind of like in a pinch. So I'm going to use a little here. Now we just put this back, put the screen back gently, and hold on, I need to focus in before my camera died. Okay, there we go. Alright, so once you put everything back together. Um, you can put some glue on it or in this case I'm just pushing it back because the residual glue is strong enough to hold the mini dung. And you press turning it on the Apple logo. So voila! This is the iPad mini repair video or tutorial showing you how to turn it on. Well, sorry, showing you how to disassemble. It's been a long day.